Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is precision agriculture and overview. So, we will see general aspects of precision agriculture. Learning objectives are to learn the concepts involved and meaning of the precision agriculture and know the scope and constraints of precision agriculture in India. So, some uh, glossary related to precision agriculture. Geographical Information System GIS, a system of capturing, storing, checking, integrating, manipulating, analyzing and displaying data which is especially reference to the earth. So, GIS is very very important component of precision agriculture. Georeferencing, defining the location of an entity object by registering its coordinates in a specific coordinate system. Global Positioning System GPS, most of you are aware of GPS, a satellite based navigation system that provides free location and time information anywhere on earth and in any weather conditions. So, it is also a very important part of PA, precision agriculture. Grid sampling, the collection of samples from a small uniform size cells based on a systematic grid laid out across a field. Grid location in the field is used to develop a field map for the attribute measured. A mechanization involved the replacement of simple hand tools and human power by more complicated machinery powered by animals, fossil fuels and electricity. Micro irrigation also called drip or trickle irrigation is an irrigation method that drips water slowly onto plant roots either via the soil surface or directly onto the root zone through a system of pipes, valves, tubings and emitters. So, this micro irrigation system is getting prominence in areas of water scarcity. Photosynthetically active radiation also called as PAR. So, it is solar radiation in the wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometer which is uh, primarily utilized for the purpose of photosynthesis through which green plants synthesize their food. Precision agriculture, it aims to apply inputs only when and where they are needed and at optimal amounts according to the vari variable field or environmental characteristics. Prescription maps, instruction or coding to direct variable rate irrigation, a sprinkler system as to where and how much to irrigate. Remote sensing. In agriculture, the non-contact sensing of plant canopy or soil to acquire information. This is remote sensing, means getting information about an object or any material uh, from a far away place. That is remote sensing. Resource capture, the capture of uh, essential growth resources like light, water and nutrients by plants. So, these are the resources. Sensors, very important component of precision farming. The scientific devices designed to measure a specific crop morphophysiological trait of interest at a specific level of interest. For example, maybe leaf, roots, soil, canopy, either by direct contact, example chlorophyll meter, orometer, etc., or remotely. Imaging sensors can be used by implementing a specific set of non destructive measurements. Thermography. Uh, these days, thermography is getting very pro prominence and used by people. So, thermal images produced by cameras that detect radiation in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Variable rate irrigation, applying different rates of irrigation in different locations throughout a particular field. Variable rate technology, VRT, it is also one of the important component of precision farming. 
system of sensors, controllers, and agricultural machinery used to perform variable rate application of crop production inputs. So, we will of course see in detail about VRT, how it is used and what it is. Now, precision agriculture or precision farming. So, both the words have same meaning. You can call it precision agriculture or precision farming because agriculture is equivalent to farming. So, therefore, at world level, most of the people prefer uh, precision agriculture, but in India, we people like to call it precision farming. Satellite farming or site specific crop management. So, these are the other names for precision farming uh, is a management concept based on observing, measuring and responding to inter and intra field variability in crops. The goal of precision agriculture research is to define a decision support system for whole farm management with the goal of optimizing returns on inputs with while preserving resources. So, here the main purpose of precision farming is to use the input as per need. So, wherever in the field of uh, any part of the field where there is need for input, only at that place input should be applied. So, it will save your input or your resources. Then it is also defined by US House of Representative 1997 an integrated information and production based farming system that is designed to increase long term site specific and whole farm production efficiency, productivity and profitability while minimizing unintended impacts on wildlife and the environment. So, this definition uh, covers almost all the aspects of precision agriculture or precision farming and first thing is that this is basically designed for whole farm approach it is not in fragmentation and second is that it is site specific the inputs are used on a particular site and whole farm production efficiency that is objective to enhance the efficiency of the whole farm and also productivity is the major part of the program you wish to raise the productivity and finally profitability because you use uh, you can save inputs uh, by precision agriculture and that saving will lead to reduction in the cost of production and it will also preserve your wildlife and also it will be good for the environment because there is no wastage of the resources and there is no over exploitation of the resources by precision farming. So, this is how we can understand the meaning of this definition. Now, let us see why we need organic farming at world level. In fact, some advanced countries like Australia, Canada, America and some European country, they are already following this precision farming. But in India, even today, it is not being followed at very large scale. Only on fragmented part of this technology are being used. For example, a spread meter, leaf color chart and few more things are being used. But uh, as, as a whole, it is uh, still uh, we need to see the day when this technology will start in full in, in the country. So, the global food system faces formidable challenges today that will increase markedly over the next 40 years. Much can be achieved immediately with current technologies and knowledge given sufficient will and investment. But coping with future challenges will require more radical changes to the food system and investment in research to provide new solutions to novel problems. So, definitely in coming future we will have more challenges, our resources will be over exploited, they will be degraded and there will be increased demands also. And with limited resources, we, we need to fill that demands. And most importantly, the cultivated area, net cultivated area in the country is declining. That is very, very serious issue. And we need to therefore, raise more productivity in the light of declining net cultivated area in the country. The decline in the total productivity, diminishing and degrading natural resources, stagnating farm incomes, declining and fragmented land holdings, trade liberalization on agriculture, limited employment opportunities in non-farm sector and global climate variations have become major concern in agricultural growth and development. So, you can see there are so many constraints 
in the present day agriculture, particularly the diminishing or declining productivity of our resources. Our lands are further getting smaller and smaller, means land, land holdings are getting fragmented station. That is a very important issue to adopt uh, some uh, recent or latest technologies. Therefore, the use of newly emerged technology adoption is seen as one of the key to increase agriculture productivity in future. So, in this case, there could be many options. See, sky has so many stars and some people like X star, some people like Y star and Z star. Likewise, there are several farming options in the country depending upon climate, soil and, and our socioeconomic status. People can follow or people follow different production systems. So, one production system is your conventional or chemical production system. Other could be integrated crop management system or integrated farming system, organic agriculture, conservation agriculture and of course, precision agriculture. So, this is how we need to balance in places where conventional agriculture is doing good, we should continue with that. But wherever possible, we should go for precision agriculture and other options also. So, precision agriculture offers the potential to automate and simplify the collection and analysis of information. So, for doing the right thing in the right place at the right time, that is the fundamental purpose of uh, precision farming, means right thing, right place and right time and for higher productivity. That is fundamental to any production program where you, you wish to raise the productivity of the land or productivity of the crops. For increasing the effectiveness of inputs, it is also prime objective of uh, precision farming that it will lead to increased input use efficiency. Therefore, cost of production will decline for maximum use of minimum land unit. Now, overall, there could be five, six objectives of precision farming. Agronomical perspective is adjustment of cultural practices to take into account the real needs of the crop, better fertilization management. So, there could be uh, several purposes in uh, agronomy or in crop production. One could be soil management, other could be fertilizer management insect pest and disease management and weed management is also important because whole field, the whole area may not have the same intensity of weeds. In some places, weeds may be in high intensity, in others they may be in low intensity or in some places there may not be at all in the same field, bigger size field. So, under those conditions, why to apply herbicide or control measure, measure in the whole area? Just apply in the area where problem is there. And this problem, a uh, farmer can identify manually also in real time, but it is difficult to quantify the information. But here the, the precision farming comes into picture. The technology of precision farming like GPS, VRT and GIS can be employed to find out the problem, to analyze the problem and then do the solution. Again, VRT will come into picture, variable rate technology that will use the herbicide or inputs selectively. So, therefore, it has very good scope and in agronomic perspective. Engineering perspective is better irrigation and tillage management can be done by precision farming. So, there could be this objective. Technical perspective, better time management at the farm level, planning of agricultural activities. So, in this case, because many times it is said that a stitch in time saves time. So, if you work time, uh, if you work any activity at right time, it will pay you a lot. But if you are late, if you have delayed the things, then you need to pay more and more. So, likewise, time management is possible, means you can precisely know the condition of the soil, plant or weather and then according to that, you can immediately apply the treatment. Environmental perspective, reduction of agricultural impacts, better estimation of crop nitrogen needs, implying limitation of nitrogen runoff. Economical perspective or rather most important perspective to increase of the output and or the reduction of the input. That is purpose of any farming practice and increase of efficiency, lower cost of nitrogen fertilization. Here nitrogen is just one example and there could be any other input. 
Now let us see how the precision farming is different from our conventional farming or traditional farming, what most of the farmers in the country are following. So number one difference is farm field is broken into management zones. So based upon the variability in the, in the field or on the farm, it is divided into homogeneous uh, units of different number. Number can be different, but, but each unit uh, we try to have some homo uh, homogeneous units. In case of traditional farming, whole field approach where field is treated as a homogeneous area. Means all, all the inputs, whatever we do, we will do it in the whole farm or whole field area. That is the difference. But in uh, precision farming, you will target only the area where interventions are required. Number two, uh, in precision farming, management decisions are based on requirement of each zone. So depending upon the requirement of each zone, you need to follow the, uh, uh, the uh, practices. Sorry. So in, in case of traditional farming, decisions are based on field averages. Precision farming tools are very advanced tools, GPS, GIS, VRT, etc. However, in traditional farming, normal tools are used or conventional tools are used. Now let us define uh, this precision farming again. Precision farming is an agricultural concept relying on the existence of field variability. It is about doing the right thing in right place and right time. It requires the use of new technologies such as global positioning system, GPS, uh, sensor satellites or aerial images and information management tools to assess and understand variations. And even in precision farming, now new and new advancements are being made. For example, people are talking of a smart agriculture, so which can I, I, I may consider it as an advanced version of precision farming. In smart agriculture, people try to locate the problem through the modern tools, like your drones are being used, your IO, Internet of Things, IoT, etc., are involved to take decisions and robotics has come into picture and so many advancements are being made and that have started to appear in the field also. Now see in uh, concept of uh, precision farming there are five R's. First, first is right input, you need to uh, use the right input by knowing the procedure through GIS, GPS system and then right time, right quantity, right place right manner. So these are five R's of concept of precision farming. Now how it is done this precision farming? First of all you need to have the data collection. Data collection is done through satellite and through satellite you record the data and data acquisition is done then it is put into a computer using GIS and you get the analysis of this data and try to identify the problems and then management decisions are made and decision support tools are also available and then they are implemented in the farm. So this is very simple uh, cycle of precision farming. Now let us see the main thing of uh, precision farming, uh, technical tools of precision farming. What are different technical tools? Let us know in detail about these tools which are very, very indispensable for precision farming remote sensing, geographic information system, global positioning system, GPS, variable rate technology, VRT and yield monitoring. So these are most important components, but there could be two, three more component also depending upon the requirement. Now global positioning system, GPS, uh, global positioning system satellites broadcast signals that allow GPS receivers to compute their location. This information is provided in real time, meaning that continuous position information is provided while in motion. Having precise location information at any time allows soil and crop measurements to be mapped very easily. GPS receivers either carried to the field or mounted on implements allow users to return to a specific location to sample or treat those areas. So GPS receivers uh, help us to get the location of the field and then for that location we get the variability, we get the data and according to that 
this GPS is also fitted on the tractor and also computer is also there. So, that will tell the tractor that you have to use uh, at this rate, this particular rate, this fertilizer, this pesticide in the field under this particular coordinate or this particular point. So, it definitely helps precise application of the inputs. GPS receivers either carried to the field or mounted on implements. There may be some problem with the GPS also. So, uncorrected GPS signals have an accuracy of about 300 feet. To be useful in agriculture, the uncorrected GPS signals must be compared to a land based or satellite based signal that provides a position correction called a differential correction. The corrected position accuracy is typically 63 to 100 feet. When purchasing a GPS receiver, the type of differential correction and its coverage relative to use area should be considered. Now, yield monitoring and mapping, the next component and rather most important component of uh, precision agriculture technologies. So, in highly mechanized systems, grain yield monitors continuously measure and record the flow of grain in the clean grain elevator of a combine. When linked with GPS receiver, yield monitors can provide data necessary for yield maps. Yield measurements are essential for making sound management decisions. However, soil, landscape and other environmental factors should also be weighed when interpreting a yield map. So, generally indirectly people, uh, people use these yield map to judge the fertility of the soil or to judge the health of the soil in, a, in different parts of the field. Used properly, yield information provides important feedback in determining the effects of managed inputs such as fertilizer amendment, seeds, pesticides and cultural practices including tillage and irrigation. So, such kind of information with, will surely help farmers or people who adopt precision agriculture in the next year also. So, since yield measurements from a single year may be heavily influenced by weather, it is always advisable to examine yield data of several years including data from extreme weather years that helps in pinpointing whether the observed yields are due to management or climate, in, uh, climate induced. So, we can take 2 years, 3 years, 4 years yield maps and then draw the conclusion and based upon that we can decide that which practice is good or which practice is bad and also it will give us idea about the fertility of the soil. Now, grid sampling and variable rate fertilizer application. So, it is a method of breaking a field into grids of about 0.5 to 5 hectares. Sampling soil with, within the grids is useful to determine the appropriate rate of application of fertilizer. So, in most of this lecture, you will find that things are restricted mainly to fertilizers and nutrients. So, sampling uh, these several samples are taken from each grid mixed and sent to the laboratory for analysis. Uh, under normal conditions, the recommended soil sampling procedure is to take samples from portions of the fields that are no more than 20 acres in area. Soil cores taken from random locations in the sampling area are combined and sent to a laboratory to be tested. Crops advisors make fertilizer application recommendations from the soil test information for the 20 acre area. So, such kind of recommendations comes after testing of the soil, where you see results of organic carbon, pH or your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, micronutrients, EC and lot of parameters can be analyzed in soil testing even texture, structure, those kind of things can be analyzed and variability in different uh, zones can be compared and it will definitely help in, uh, in creating the management zones in the field based upon soil fertility data, which is obtained after soil testing. So, grid sampling, grid soil sampling uses the same principle of soil sampling, but increases the intensity of sampling. For example, a 20 acre sampling 
area would have 10 samples using 2 acre grid sampling system and samples are spaced 300 feet from each other compared to one sample in the traditional recommendations. Soil samples collected in a systematic grid also have location information that allows the data to be mapped. So, you need to keep the location of the sample also, its coordinate, its longitude, latitude, etc., so that it helps in the mapping of the field. Overall, the goal of grid sampling is to generate a map of nutrient requirement called an application map or you can call it so a fertility map also. Grid soil samples are analyzed in the laboratory and upon interpretation of crop nutrient need is made for each sample. The application of map is loaded into a computer that is important part mounted on a variable rate fertilizer spreader or applicator. The computer uses the application map and a GPS receiver to direct a product delivery controller that changes the amount and or kind of fertilizer product according to the application map. So, here you can have in the variable rate applicator, you can have provision of applying two different nutrients, three different nutrients, you can have options of applying variable rates. In some places, uh, when tractor moves, you may need less rate of fertilizer, in other places you may need higher rate of application of fertilizer. So, this VRT will do according to that and map is already uh, fitted there in, there in the computer system which will guide the VRT or machine to have variable application of the input in the field. Now, components of variability, let us see what, why and where this variability happens. The basic steps in precision farming are assessment and management of variability followed by evaluation. Information or database is the primary thing in assessing variability in agriculture. To manage in-field variability, especially or temp temporarily, especially means in space, temporarily means with time. Data related to biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are mostly your environment, uh, biotic factors are weeds, your insect pests and diseases, mostly organism which may lead to the uh, insect uh, diseases in plant and pest and also some abiotic factors like your uh, light, temperature, rainfall, etc. Are, are important and databases in this regard need to be developed. Following are the components where variability can be assessed for adoption of precision agriculture. Now, soil. Soil definitely has lot of variability and physical properties like texture, texture means your size of individual particle in the uh, particle of the soil. Structure is the arrangement of soil particle, how different uh, particles in the soil are arranged. Moisture holding capacity, it is the quantity of water that a particular soil can hold. Bulk and particle density, you might be uh, knowing it. So, these, they, these are the parameters, physical parameters which may have different in different zones. Chemical properties like pH, electrical conductivity, available plant nutrients. So, based upon these physical properties, the maps are generated. Maps of physical property, chemical property are generated. So, chemical property you can see these are pH, EC and available plant nutrients. And sometimes you can also include uh, carbon here. Organic matter is also an important component. And in crop, you can have planting geometry, means row to row and plant to plant spacing, plant stand. Many times farmers uh, get broadcasting of the seed where random population is there. However, in some crops, square planting is done, in some rectangular planting is done. So, that can be taken into account. Nutrient composition of a standing plant, uh, plant is stress due to biotic and abiotic factors. So, this is important because sometimes your uh, nutrient deficiencies or invasion of insect pests and diseases leads to changes in the color of the crop, changes in the color of the vegetation also. So, based upon this, you, the, you can get the data that which particular part of the field is getting affected by these kind of problems. So, weed, insect and disease, potential economic and biological yields. So, 
variety of data can be can be taken on the crow climate it is necessary to have data on air temperature temperature around plant canopy relative humidity rainfall solar radiation day length and wind velocity the available multidisciplinary and latest technologies help in the understanding of the variations and site specific agronomic recommendations to manage the production system now remote sensing is another part or component of precision agriculture so remote sensing is collection of data from a distance even if you take a photograph simple photograph by a mobile or a camera it is also remote sensing because two people are not coming in contact data sensors can simply be handheld devices mounted on aircraft or satellite based remotely sensed data provide a tool for evaluating crop health plant stress related to moisture nutrients compaction crop diseases and other plant health concerns are often easily detected in overhead images electronic cameras can also record near infrared images that are highly correlated with healthy plant tissues new image sensors with high spectral resolution are increasing the information collected from satellite now maybe uh, you can get a resolution of 1 meter ar around 1 meter remote sensing can reveal in season variability that affects crop yield and can be timely enough to make management decisions that improve profitability for the current crop remotely sensed images can help determine the location and extent of crop stress analysis of such images used in tandem with scouting can help determine the cause of certain components of crop stress the images can then be used to develop and implement a spot treatment plant that op plan that optimizes the use of agricultural chemicals now next component of precision agriculture is crop scouting in season observations of crop conditions may include weed patches like weed type and intensity this is for agronomic uh, data and it is for crop production insect or fungal infestation species and intensity crop tissue nutrient uh, status flooded and eroded areas using gps receiver on an all terrain vehicle or in a backpack a location can be associated with observations making it easier to return to the same location for treatment so these observations also can be helpful later when explaining variations in yield maps geographical information system gis so gis basically are computer hardware and software that use feature attributes and location data to produce maps an important function of an agricultural gis is to store layers of, of information such as yields soil survey maps remotely sensed data crop scouting reports and soil nutrient levels so whenever you get the data from satellite and you also get information of gps you can combine all kind of data through gis and prepare the map and that map will be used for variable application of the inputs on the machine geographically reference data can be displayed in the gis adding a visual perspective for interpretation in addition to data storage and display the gis can be used to evaluate present and alternative management by combining and manipulating data layers to produce an analysis of management scenario now variable rate technology vrt now you have made management zones everything is there gis maps are also there now you want to implement you want to use the inputs now who will do it so variable rate technology will help you to do that so variable rate technologies are automatic and may be applied to numerous farming operations vrt systems set the rate of delivery of farm inputs depending on the soil type noted in a soil map information extrapolated from the gis can control processes such as seeding 
means it will be called as site specific seeding fertilizer and pesticide application so it will be site specific fertilizer management or fertilizer application or you can call it site specific nutrient management and pesticide application herbicide application again you can put prefix uh, site specific herbicide selection or application at a variable rate in the right place and at the right time so that will definitely save you lot of inputs the existing field machinery with added electronic control unit ecu is the electronic control unit and on board gps can fulfill the variable rate equipment of input so you can have spray booms the spinning disc applicator with ecu and gps have been used effectively for patch spraying during the creation of a nutrient requirement map for vrt profit maximizing fertilizer rate should be considered more rather than the yield maximizing fertilizer rate so here optimum rate of the fertilizer should be used where you get the maximum economic return now there are sensor technologies which are utilized in the in the precision agriculture various technologies such as electromagnetic conductivity photoelectricity and ultrasound are used to measure humidity vegetation temperature texture structure physical characters nutrient level vapor air and e, etc so dear students in the present day agriculture or present day science variety of sensors have been developed like moisture sensors sensors can measure your moisture now you don't need to analyze moisture in the laboratory using gravimetric methods or some other methods gypsum block this and that you you can have some sensors that can directly tell you the reading of the moisture percent similarly variety of uh, parameters of the soil can be uh, can be obtained by using sensors the only problem is that they are technology driven and they are expensive also normal farmer normal normal people even the laboratories cannot afford them oh, really very very expensive so uh, vegetation temperature texture structure physical character nutrient level vapor for these parameters you can have sensors so remote sensing data are used to distinguish crop species locate stress conditions identify pest and weeds and monitor drought soil and plant conditions these are generally categories of aerial or satellite sensors they can indicate variations in the colors of the field that correspond and corresponds to the changes in soil type crop development field boundaries roads water etc aerial and satellite imagery can be processed to provide vegetative indices which reflect the health of the plant so it will be done with the help of the gis now information management this is also part of the precision agriculture and perhaps the last part of the precision agriculture the adoption of precision agriculture requires the joint development of management skills and pertinent information databases effectively using information requires a farmer to have a clear idea of the business objectives and crucial information necessary to make decisions effective information management requires more than record keeping analysis tools or a gis it requires an entrepreneurial attitude towards education and experimentation identifying a precision agriculture service provider because in the country we have a small land holdings and farmers most of the farmers are small farmer and so economic conditions is not very good so how can they afford these modern tools gps gis and even it is difficult for the educated farmer to understand the uh, intricacies of these inputs so uh, you need some some options some some somebody can uh, collect these items and provide the service to the farmers so identifying a precision agriculture service provider it is also advisable for farmers to consider the availability of custom services when making decisions about 
adopting size site specific crop management site specific crop management is also precision farming agricultural service providers or properly trained extension workers may offer a variety of precision agriculture services to the farmers by distrib distributing capital cost for specialized equipment over more land and by using the skills of precision agriculture specialist custom services can be can decrease the cost and increase the efficiency of precision agriculture activities so for example you have a block block in a district and you have several villages attached to that block so in this case in one or two villages some custom hiring centers can be started by some service provider and they can have all sorts of equipment logistics so that service can be provided to the farmers on payment basis so that way farmers can afford it because they will pay less agricultural service providers must identify a group of committed customers self help groups or cooperatives to justify purchasing the equipment and allocating human resources to offer these services once a service provider is established precision agriculture activities in that region tend to center around the service providers for this reason adopters of precision farming practices often are found in clusters surrounding the service provider the most common custom services that precision agriculture service providers offer are intensive soil sampling mapping and variable rate application of fertilizer and lime so such kind of uh, uh, service providers are available equipment required for these operations include a vehicle equipped with gps receiver and a field computer for soil sampling a computer with mapping software and a variable rate applicator for fertilizer and lime purchasing this equipment and learning the necessary skills is a significant upfront cost that can be prohibited for many farmers so in this case we we know the about the laser land leveler so laser land leveler is also a precision farming technology and it has spread in the country like anything starting from punjab haryana western up madhya pradesh tamil nadu andhra pradesh in many states this precision land leveling have been adopted by the farmers and every 2 to 3 uh, years they are getting their land leveled by the laser laser land leveler so this is where the technology has entered and these laser land levelers are provided by the service provider because they are very expensive starting from rupees 2 lakh 5 lakhs and in the early days it was costing very high maybe 5 to 10 lakhs was the price of uh, laser land leveler but now some indian people indian companies have asked also started making it and now they are a bit cheaper now generalized stages for the progressive adoption of pa in grain production so this is how some examples are given here how we can use this precision agriculture techniques uh, number 1 objective number 1 you want to ensure uniform rate crop management is optimized and improve farming efficiency how pa tools and techniques may be used so in this case use gps navigation and location recording for crop scouting soil sampling and simple field experimentation for example varieties or input rates use vehicle guidance and auto steering to increase efficiency for example reduced overlap establish controlled traffic or raised bed systems and so into inter rows perform shielded spraying etc uh, second objective is measure where and how much crop production varies across fields the farm and seasons means kind of yield monitoring so use gps linked yield quantity or quality monitors other on ground crop and soil sensors and remotely sense data to develop map of variability compare maps over seasons and crops to identify patterns and size of production variability across fields and whole farm the, the third part or third objective or you can say third step is determine the major causes of the variability you must have seen uh, yield variability by maps and now you you analyze the reasons 
use maps and images to target field investigations into likely causes of variability in production. Soil and crop tissue testing in areas highlighted by the maps will help pinpoint the causes. Fourth one is optimize the use of inputs to maximize gross margin and minimize environmental footprints. So, may involve delineating different management classes at field or farm scale. Means you need to find out uh, management zones, use the information already gathered to formulate required actions, may involve adapting standard agronomic practices in field experimentation or applying the results of scenario simulation models to test alternative management options. These include ameliorating for problems, for example, pH or preparing variable rate input application maps if required. For example, if your soil is acidic and you come out to know that this part is having more acidity and this part is having less acidity and you have also calculated the quantity of lime required and then you can use that lime by the machine at variable rates. Then fifth and last important part or objective of PA is improve grain quality control and product marketing. So, use GPS with grain quality monitors to meet quality requirements and achieve price premiums and electronic information tagging of field operations and grain loads provides data to support marketing and quality control or assurance. Now, site specific crop management, this is really a part or important part or kind of precision agriculture or precision farming, which is uh, uh, easy to implement. So, you can see it is a form of PA, precision agriculture, whereby decisions on resource application and agronomic practices are improved to better match soil and crop requirements as they vary in the field. Similarly, we can have site specific nutrient management, site specific weed management. So, we can take this precision agriculture in part, then we can apply it. Uh, SSCM can be considered as application information at the site specific level with greater knowledge, grower knowledge to achieve the objectives of optimizing the production efficiency, optimizing quality, minimizing environmental impact and minimizing the risk of farming. Objective of SSCM, uh, the success of an SSCM strategy will depend on how each or all of the above objectives are met. Now see the uh, merits of uh, site specific crop management SSCM in agriculture with minimized financial and environmental risk. So, minimum risk of finance and minimum risk of environment means it is environment friendly and, and income is ensured. Then economic optimum input quantities more pre precisely targeted and maximize the gross return. And environmental definitely optimum input quantities more precisely targeted that minimize the environmental impact. So, economics is good environment is good, then this technology is good. Uh, SSCM involves the application of PA to crop management, decisions on resource application, resources are your uh, inputs and agronomic practices are improved to better match soil and crop requirements as they change in a field. SSCM can be applied to management at the individual field or whole farm basis. SSCM is an evolving management strategy. It is driving a shift from uniform management of inputs towards management by defined production classes and on to continuously variable management. Management by production classes deals with identifying and treating areas with different production potentials. Management classes are a common way of uh, compressing many data layers and implementing SSCM. Identification of management classes within the field and the application of SSCM techniques and technologies should be validated by relevant crop response means measurements uh, like yield or quality. 
प्रोडक्शन वेरिएशन में भी ड्यू टू इन्वायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स और मैनेजमेंट फैक्टर्स इट में अकर इन क्रॉप क्वान्टिटी दैट इज ईल एंड क्वालिटी एंड कैन बी मैनेज इन बहुत हेयर क्वालिटी में इंक्लूड योर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ़ इट इज़ ऑयल सीड क्रॉप दैन ऑयल परसेंटेज इफ इट इज़ शुगर क्रॉप दैन शुगर परसेंटेज इफ इट इज़ ग्रेन क्रॉप और पल्स क्रॉप यू मे चेक प्रोटीन परसेंटेज इफ दे आर फ्रूट्स यू कैन चेक देयर न्यूट्रिशनल कम्पोजिशन विटामिन मिनरल्स एंड सो ऑन सो क्वालिटी पैरामीटर्स वेरीज विद द काइंड ऑफ क्रॉप यू हैव ऑन फार्म एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ प्रसिजन एग्रीकल्चर एंड इज यूज फॉर इंक्रीजिंग नॉलेज ऑफ ए प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दिस प्रसिजन फार्मिंग रिसर्च और प्रसिजन एग्रीकल्चर रिसर्च इज़ डन एट फार्मर्स फील्ड और ऑन फार्म रिसर्च जनरली बिकॉज एट एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टेशन देर आर देर आर नो सच वाइड एरियाज ऑफ हैक्टेयर्स देर आर अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू मैनेज बोथ टेम्पोरल टेम्पोरल मीन्स टाइम दैट इज बिटवीन सीजन्स एंड स्पेशल मीन्स विद इन फील्ड वेरिएशन इन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन पी ए एडाप्शन स्टार्ट वैन ए फार्मर वांट्स टू अप्लाई ए न्यू लेवल नॉलेज टू ए प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस इट इज़ नॉट नेसेसरली सिनोनिमस विद बाइंग ए जी पी एस यूनिट एंड और और ए ईल्ड मोनिटर देर आर वेरियस एंट्री पॉइंट्स इन टू पी ए फॉर फार्मर्स नॉट ऑल ऑफ दैम इन्वॉल्व ए लार्ज इनिशियल कैपिटल आउटले डिफ्रेंसेज इन सॉयल एंड क्लाइमेट वेरेबिलिटी बिटवीन क्रॉपिंग रीजन्स मीन दैट द मोस्ट सूटेबल वाइबल पी ए टेक्निक्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज में डिफर बिटवीन रीजन्स प्रोड्यूसर्स शुड ऑलवेज कंसिडर द यूज ऑफ इक्विपमेंट एंड टेक्निक्स इन लाइट ऑफ देयर स्पेसिफिक इशूज नाउ सी दिस मॉन्डल एंड बासू टू थाउजेंड एट दे प्रपोज कॉमन पी ए एडोपन स्ट्रेटजीज फॉर डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया सो नंबर वन कॉलम इज स्ट्रेटिक पी ए एडोपन कंपोनेंट एंड सेकेंड कॉलम टेक्नोलॉजी ऑप्शन सिंगल पी ए टेक्नोलॉजी इट इज सिंगल लो लेवल पी ए टेक्नोलॉजीज एल सी सी इज योर लीफ कलर चार्ट स्मॉल मशीन बेस्ड वी आर टी वेरिएबल रेट टेक्नोलॉजी एट्सेट्रा पी ए टेक्नोलॉजी पैकेज इंक्लूड स्पेड एल सी सी डी एस एस जी आई एस वी आर टी जी पी एस दे आर यूजेबल टेक्नोलॉजीज इंटीग्रेटेड पी ए टेक्निक्स ऑनलाइन सेंसर इमेज प्रोसेसिंग रिमोट सेंसिंग ईल्ड मोनिटरिंग सिस्टम वी आर टी जी पी एस सो दीज आर और वेरी वेरी सिंपल टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट कैन बी फॉलोड एंड अडोप्टेड इन अवर कंट्री लेट एस चेक सम मेरिट्स ऑफ प्रसिजन फार्मिंग इम्प्रूव क्रॉप ईल्ड डेफिनेटली योर इनपुट्स आर सेव्ड एंड ईल्ड आल्सो इम्प्रूव बिकॉज इट आइडेंटिफाइज द वीकर एरिया ऑफ द फार्म और वीकर एरिया ऑफ द क्रॉप वेयर यू नीड इंटरवेंशन and it is in real time you get data uh, in real time and you can apply the corrective measures provide information to make better management decisions reduce chemical and fertilizer cost through more efficient application ability to achieve optimum produce of uniform and higher quality because all the field ultimately will have lot of uniformity because weaker area have been improved so all uh, plants all crop system would would be uniform provide more accurate farm records reduction in cost of cultivation and increase in production efficiency of inputs reduction in chemical doses through variable rate application technology reduction in application of irrigation water thus reduce the leaching of nutrients this is indirect benefit uh, along with deep percolation Uh, reduced uh, runoff erosion and sedimentation of water bodies and reduction in environment pollution everything is good and uh, now but some constraints are still there constraint in adoption and popularization of precision farming in asian crop uh, cropping zones including india so th- it is not very wide spread in the country only some parts of precision farming some tools of precision farming have been employed have been used in india Uh, see major constraints are high cost of obtaining site specific data lack of willingness to share spatial data among various organizations some government organization uh, considered that this data is very sensitive and they are not sharing freely complexity of tools and techniques that require new skills culture attitude and perception of farmers including resistance to adoption of new techniques 
and lack of awareness of agro environmental problems. Small farms heterogeneity of cropping systems and land tenure ownership restrictions. So here a small farm or a small land holding is the big limitation in India. More than 80 percent of the farmers have uh, small holdings. Uh, lack of success stories about adoption of precision farming and lack of demonstrated impact on yields. Lack of local technical expertise. So lot of constraints are there in the country. Uh, uncertainty on returns from investment to be made on new equipment and information management system. So farmers do not want to take risk. Inadequate understanding of agronomic factors and their interaction. Lack of understanding of the geostatistics necessary for displaying spatial variability of crops and soils using current mapping software. Limited ability to integrate information from diverse sources with varying resolutions and intensities. And of course, uh, future is there, some future is there particularly with big farmers and resource rich farmers or if we go for custom hari kind of uh, things. So opportunity will continue for precision agriculture studies, tools will become available to apply chemicals, fertilizers, tillage and seed differently to a field and collect the yield or plant biomass by position across the field. Remote sensing technology will allow us to observe variation within a field throughout the growing season relative to impose management changes. Monitoring equipment exists for capturing the surface water and groundwater samples needed to quantify the environmental impact through surface runoff or leaching. The technology exists to capture the volatilization of nitrogen or pesticides from the field into the atmosphere from modified practices. So here the point comes that if we want to uh, reduce the pollution of fertilizer or pollution caused by agriculture, in that case such kind of technology could be very, very useful because you can reduce such pollution by cutting the input use. Increasing the absence of input means you are reducing the pollution. The future direction of agriculture will depend upon the research community's ability to conduct this type of study with confidence from the environmental and producer communities that changes with benefit uh, will benefit the environment and increase the efficiency of agriculture production. So this uh, uh, precision agriculture or precision farming holds a promise, but it is po only possible in selected areas where we have big size farm or big size area, but part of these technologies like leaf color chart, spread meter and some simple things like right seed placement etc. can be applicable in India. So such kind of technology will definitely save our uh, costly inputs and saving of input means your efficiency is improved, your monetary returns are improved. Thank you very much.